Good evening. Welcome to the October 9, 2023 Cabarrus County Board of Education Business Session. I'd like to recognize our Teacher of the Year, Ms. Carrie Fugel, our board members, Brian Floyd, Sam Treadaway, Keisha Sandage, our Superintendent, Dr. John Kapicki, our Vice Chair, Rob Walter, board members, Laura Lindsay, our Attorney, Gil Middlebrooks, and our board clerk, Christy Spade. Board member Pam Escobar is joining us virtually. Pam, are you there? Okay. We'll try her again in just a few minutes. We'd like to thank our SRO who is here tonight as well. We'll move to 1.01 where I will call this meeting to order. We'll now move to 2.01 and 2.02 .02 with our opening ceremony with the presentation of colors and the national anthem. Presenting tonight's colors are members of the Mount Pleasant High School Flying Tigers, Air Force JROTC, and their personnel includes Cadet First Lieutenant Mila Everett, Cadet Second Lieutenant Caleb Edinburn, Cadet Technical Sergeant William Farrell, Cadet Staff Sergeant Rory McEachern. Honoring America tonight with the singing of our national anthem were members of the Cox Mill Elementary 5th grade chorus. Please welcome Ms. Archer to recognize her students. Thank you. We have Jiwa Kewate, Zainab Mando, Maddox Thompson, Max Gettinger, Charlotte Durger, Shiv Ganju, Duthi Swayam Pakula, Elian Velez, Ellie Hyde, Roja Bahuntula, Brendan Phillips, Grant Eldridge, Ryan Hellman, Kelly Shong, uh, Amira Salim, Rayon Kadia, Moksha Mupala, Zeke Harper, and Daniel Hada.
Thank you. We'll move to 3.01 to adopt the agenda. Board members, I need a motion to approve the agenda for the October 9, 2023 business session as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Floyd, a second by Mr. Walter. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The agenda is approved. Board members will move to 4.01 in the Impact Through Education Awards with Mr. Phil Furr. Welcome, Mr. Furr. Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Kapicki, good evening. Tonight, we will present Impact Through Education Awards to students and staff at Pitt School Road Elementary School and Central Cabarrus High School. Our sponsors for the Impact Awards are our friends at Equitable. At this time, I would like to invite our Equitable representative, Emily Satterley, to join me at the front of the room. Before we get started with the awards, please accept our sincere thanks and gratitude to Equitable for its continued sponsorship of the Impact Through Education Awards. Tonight, we continue our 14th year of honoring those making an impact in our schools with this award. We appreciate your support, and thank you for helping us celebrate and recognize deserving students and staff. We also want to say a word of thanks to our Cabarrus Regional Chamber and to Concord Trophy Center for providing us with the award plaques each month. Now on to tonight's awards. May I have the Pitt School Road Elementary School Administrative Team come forward, please. Our first honoree from Pitt School Road Elementary is Kenneth Albert. Kenneth, please come forward with your family. Kenneth came to Pitt School Road Elementary last year as a kindergartner in the Learning Connections program. Immediately, you knew something was different about Kenneth. He has a spark that cannot be described. This year, as a first grader, he has truly begun to come into his own with personality, leadership, and style. He works to set an example with his peers and models the Pitt School Road core values. He has made so much progress socially and academically and has started spending a lot of time in another first grade classroom where he immediately draws people to him. Both adults and students see something in Kenneth that is special. He really does bring joy and hope into the lives of others. While he may not always be aware, he consistently makes an impact wherever he goes. He lets nothing hold him back and is completely comfortable being his amazing self. We are so proud of you, Kenneth and how far you've come and cannot wait to see what else is in store for you. Congratulations, Kenneth. You're an Impact Through Education Award winner for Pitt School Road Elementary School. Our next honoree from Pitt School Road is Camden O'Neill. Camden cannot be with us tonight, but I want to read what the staff at Pitt School Road had to say about him. Camden started attending Pitt School Road in third grade. His story is really one that is almost unbelievable. Camden came to school most days frustrated and confused. He was behind academically and did not trust the staff, but he gave them a chance. Pitt School Road built a support system around him and was determined that what they saw inside of him was amazing and extraordinary. Mrs. Patterson not only set up MTSS supports, but built an incredible relationship with him. The entire administrative team supported him. They worked plans and interventions and saw him start to work hard as well. They believed in him and he began to believe in himself. In fourth grade, he, has an, he had an amazing teacher, Mrs. Larman, who continued to pour into him in every possible way. 
His growth was incredible. He came to school with joy. He began to encourage others, and he began to soar. This year alone, he has taken the time to go up to every one of our Learning Connection students at lunch and speak to them. He brings a smile to everyone's face. He is a leader. He is someone who loves school and loves showing everyone how far he's come in a little over two short years. Most importantly, he makes an impact on students and staff always. You cannot spend time with him and not find yourself smiling and remembering why you got into education in the first place. As one of our interventionists, Ms. Shelley Schultz, said as she was passed in the hallway working with Camden, I just love him. Camden, we all feel the same. We love you and we're so proud of you. Thank you for trusting us and for believing in yourself. You're an incredible success story, and I truly believe the best is yet to come for you. Congratulations, Camden. You're an Impact Through Education Award winner for Pitt School Road Elementary School. Also from Pitt School Road Elementary is support staff member Whitney Carroll. Ms. Carroll, please come forward with your family. Ms. Whitney Carroll serves as the front desk secretary at Pitt School Road, but her role is truly so much more involved and impactful. She tr truly helps every person that walks through the door feel a part of our school family. She welcomes parents with constant care and attention and is always ready to help and serve in any way. Students immediately feel cared for and seen and know they are always in great hands. Community members, county office personnel, and visitors of every type always receive her best. When she is not providing incredible customer service to everyone in the school family, she constantly supports our, their administrative team and teachers and staff. She can organize data, think critically and creatively to problem solve, complete tasks before you can walk back to your office, and is always ready to pitch in and help anywhere there is a need. Her favorite phrase is, what do you need? And it is always met with a smile and genuine care. I can say completely that our school would not be the same without her. She is a blessing to us all. I am so proud to work alongside her each and every day and see the impact she makes on so many people. Congratulations, Whitney. You're an Impact Through Education Award winner for Pitt School Road Elementary School. And finally, from Pitt School Road Elementary is teacher Janelle Patterson. Ms. Patterson, please come forward with your family. When you think about the real impact someone has at a school, the greatest measure is the measure which can never be captured. The work Ms. Janelle Patterson does each day for our entire school cannot be described or quantified. She is assigned the title of MTSS coach. However, there is not a title large enough to describe how she impacts every student, teacher, support staff, and our entire educational program. Ms. Patterson has designed and created a system of MTSS supports for all levels of students. Over the past two years, Pitt School Road has been highlighted for our incredible work and growth regarding our student support systems. It is almost entirely because of Ms. Patterson. She worked so hard to make sure every child at our school has the right and best supports. If it is academic-based, she wants them to have the perfect intervention that truly meets their needs. If it is a behavior need, each student will have the best plan with the best people to help them be successful. On top of running and overseeing an incredible MTSS program, she also serves as our lead school mentor for all our beginning teachers, 
provides coaching cycles and direct supports to numerous teachers in the building, leads PLC data discussions and problem solving team, and is a constant support for all our students and staff. There is truly nothing that she will not do. She also takes time to build strong relationships with students that need it the most. She is always available to work with parents and share their child's progress and next steps. She does this with care, compassion, and professionalism every time. Most importantly, she is an advocate for every child, every teacher, and everything that is right about education. If there is anyone in this country or state having a larger impact on the school than Ms. Patterson, I would love to hire them and let them work together to change the lives of children. <laughs> she makes an impact every day and every moment, and I am so thankful to have her be a part of our leadership team to change the world of children at Pitt School Road Elementary. Congratulations, Janelle. You are an Impact Through Education Award winner for Pitt School Road Elementary School. We will now continue with our October Impact Through Education Awards by welcoming Central Cabarrus High School. May I have the Central Cabarrus administrative team come forward, please. Our first honoree from Central Cabarrus High School is Justin Rogers. Justin, please come forward with your family. Justin Rogers is a senior at Central Cabarrus High School. Justin is being recognized for the Impact Through Education Award because of his positive attitude and willingness to always support others. Justin has been an active member of multiple varsity sports at Central Cabarrus, including wrestling, track and field, and football. He was an all-conference selection in football during the 2022-23 season and currently serves as a team captain. Additionally, Justin has participated in our trades program and competed in the Skills USA competition within the area of carpentry. Justin's teachers and coaches describe him as a student who always lends a helping hand to his classmates and teachers and is always the hardest worker in the room. When asked why he thinks he was chosen as an Impact Award recipient, Justin's humility was evident as he shared, I don't really know. I just do the right thing, pay attention, and show respect. Although Justin may struggle to realize the impact he has on others, it is clear to us, as one of his coaches said, our school is no doubt a better place because we have a Justin Rogers that walks our halls. Indeed, Justin has given to Central Cabarrus High School in so many ways as an example of the positive, supportive influence we are each capable of. Justin exemplifies the Viking spirit, always thinking of others and how he can benefit his school and community. Congratulations, Justin. You're an Impact Through Education Award winner for Central Cabarrus High School. Our next honoree from Central Cabarrus is Micah Smith. Micah, please come forward with your family. Micah Smith is a senior in the STEM program at Central Cabarrus High School. Micah is an active member of the cheerleading team, chorus, and musical theater program. 
Additionally, she actively supports her church through the youth program. Micah has excelled in all her pursuits, earning all state cheer recognition, and is being nominated for a Bloomy for her role as the lead character, Matilda, in the 2023 Spring Musical. Micah's teachers describe her as a student who is always smiling, is an excellent writer and creative problem solver, and who always sets an example of excellence for her peers to follow. When asked what she enjoyed most about her time at Central Cabarrus High School, Micah responded that the supportive relationships she has developed with teachers and the positive environment within her classes have been influential parts of her high school experience. Whether involved in creative efforts through the arts, competing at the highest levels in athletics, or excelling academically in the rigorous STEM program, Micah proudly represents the Viking family. Micah's modest and determined approach to her academic, extracurricular, and civic pursuits as an example to others and a driving force in the positive impact she has had on the students, staff, and community of Central Cabarrus High School. Micah embodies the Viking spirit, exemplifying excellence as a student, athlete, and community member. Congratulations, Micah. You're an Impact Through Education Award winner for Central Cabarrus High School. Next, from Central Cabarrus, is staff member Candy Mazell. Ms. Mazell, please come forward with your family. Ms. Candy Mazell is a school nurse at Central Cabarrus High School, yet that job title only scratches the surface of her impact. Nurse Mazelle is a longtime supporter of Central Cabarrus High School and its feeder schools, having served as a substitute, PTSO board member, and an athletic boosters board member. To the great benefit of Central Cabarrus High School, she decided to become a school nurse at CCHS in the fall of 2007. She is being recognized as the Impact Through Education Award recipient because through the trials and tribulations of all things student health related, Nurse Mazelle stands resolute and unflappable. She is a calm, reassuring support for students, parents, and teachers. Additionally, Nurse Mazelle is one of Central Cabarrus High School's biggest fans as she trades in her nursing scrubs for head-to-toe green and gold at athletic contests, arts productions, and various other extracurricular school events. Nurse Mazelle is described by her colleagues as so patient, kind, and professional with a genuine love for Central Cabarrus High School and its community. She is also known for bringing joy to others throughout her role as school nurse. Another colleague shared that Nurse Mazelle is always singing and one day only communicated with me through song. She obviously could have had a career in music, so we are beyond blessed to have her. It is Nurse Mazelle's joyful, service-oriented approach to her role as a school nurse that impacts Central Cabarrus High School at a level that goes far beyond the duties and responsibilities of a school nurse. Because of her impact on the school, Central Cabarrus High School is a better place to learn and work. Congratulations, Candy. You're an Impact Through Education Award winner for Central Cabarrus High School. And finally, from Central Cabarrus, is teacher Robin Walker. Ms. Walker, please come forward with your family. Ms. Walker is the animal science teacher and co-advisor for the Future Farmers of America Club at Central Cabarrus High School. 
Her pathway to agriculture education was not traditional, as she originally embarked on a career in veterinary science before transitioning to teaching middle school science. Wishing to mix the best of both worlds, Ms. Walker blessed Central Cabarrus High School when she stepped into the role of agriculture teacher in the fall of 2022. During her time at CCHS, Ms. Walker has quickly stepped into many roles, taking over the animal science program and in two short years, nearly doubling the student enrollment. Additionally, her shared support of the FFA club has resulted in continuing a tradition of excellence in one of our longest standing student leadership organizations. Ms. Walker's colleagues describe her by saying, I'm not sure I know anyone who works as hard, loves as much, and gives in so many ways. Additionally, they noted how she supports students and staff well outside the bounds of the agriculture pathway, such as spending hours washing dishes for the summer cooking camps as part of CTE summer programming and on beautification projects around campus to maintain Viking pride in our school. Perhaps the best way to capture Ms. Walker's impact is to consider the FFA creed that all members and advisors must take. The creed states that members must have a faith in agriculture born not of words, but of deeds. Ms. Walker's selfless acts of service are a testament to her impact on CCHS. Our school community is thankful for Ms. Walker and the impact she has on our students, families, and staff. Congratulations, Robin. You're an Impact Through Education Award winner for Central Cabarrus High School. This concludes our Impact Awards presentations for tonight. Congratulations to all our recipients and thanks again to our partners Equitable and the Cabarrus Chamber of Commerce for your partnership. Board members will move to 4.02 with our Hilbish Ford Teacher of the Month with Mr. Phil Furr. I could never hope to replace Dr. Williams or Mr. Reeves, but um, I'm filling in tonight while they're out of town. Good evening again, Madam Chair, board members, Dr. Kapicki, and to our viewing audiences both here and those watching on the live stream. It is my pleasure, it is my pleasure to recognize our Hilbush Ford Teacher of the Month for October. We always want to begin with expressing our sincere thanks and gratitude to Mr. Tim Vaughn and Hilbush Ford for their tremendous generosity and continued sponsorship of this wonderful recognition program. Our Hilbush Ford Teacher of the Month for October is Tara Furr, a French teacher at Mount Pleasant High School. At this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Furr, her family, and the Mount Pleasant High School administrative team in attendance to please come forward. Tonight, I would like to share the nomination that was submitted by a co-worker about Ms. Furr. Ms. Furr knows her why. Her passion for her students in class is obvious from the moment you walk in. She believes in every student. Her ability to create a relationship with each student gives her the connecting points that are needed to help transform their education. Ms. Furr is a perfect example of Mount Pleasant High School and everything we do to impact children. Ms. Furr, Thank you for the impact you've made to teach, engage, and inspire the students in your classroom. Congratulations on your selection as Cabarrus County Schools Hilbish Ford Teacher of the Month.
Okay, board members will move to 4.03 with our Everyday Hero Award winner, Dr. Jonathan Bowers. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good evening to you, members of the board. Good evening to you as well, and Dr. Kapicki. Uh, joining me here tonight at the podium is Mr. Matthew Herlocker. He is the Assistant Transportation Director uh, for Cabarrus County Schools. Uh, once again, it's my pleasure to be with you here tonight to be able to uh, introduce this month's Everyday Hero Award recipient. If I could get Miss Leslie Jones and certainly those accompanying her tonight to come down front, please. As you know, this award is presented to an exceptional employee within our Auxiliary Services Division. This includes our Kids Plus, Facilities and Maintenance, Construction, School Nutrition, and Transportation Divisions. This award is sponsored by Great Wolf Lodge. The Everyday Hero Award is intended to acknowledge the outstanding, behind the scenes, and sometimes often unnoticed work of our Auxiliary Services professionals. We all know there's great work being done by these individuals every single day that should be recognized publicly. Nominations for this award are submitted by Cabarrus County Schools employees, parents, students, and one recipient is selected each month to be recognized. Once again, Ms. Leslie Jones, congratulations for being recognized this month. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Herlocker, who's going to share some words and uh, some reasons why she is this month's recipient and is well-deserving. Le Leslie Jones embodies everything this award is about. Leslie has been with Cabarrus County Transportation and our family for the last 15 years. She has done 17, excuse me, 17. She has been an amazing member during that time. She goes above and beyond, staying late when it's needed, coming in early when it's needed, to ensure that every single child has a, a bus ride. Um, she has done absolutely fantastic. She's always, even in times of challenge, she is always a happy, cheerful face. Even when times get hard, she pushes through and keeps us all propped up. And I cannot say enough. Thank you, Leslie. Okay, board members, we will move to 5.01, our approval of minutes. I need a motion to approve the open session minutes for September 11th and 18th as presented. So moved. I need a second. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Lindsay, a second by Mr. Floyd. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes have been approved. Okay, board members, we'll move to 6.01 board chair comments. Um, just like again to thank our board members for their continuous um, support of the school system in numerous ways, athletic events, band presentations, school visits, and it's just uh, noted throughout our district that you care about what goes on in our district and want to see firsthand what is um, happening right at the school level, so thank you for your personal example. We'll move to 6.02 and our superintendent comments with Dr. John Kapicki. Thank you, Mrs. Atcock. Just a few quick announcements for our public. The first thing I'd like to remind our public is that our program choice applications for the 2024-25 school year will be open from Tuesday to October 17th until December 15th, 2023. 
Parent notification of placement will occur in the online family dashboard the week of February 1st, 2024. The program Choice Fair will be held in conjunction with the Futures Fair on Monday, October 16th, one week from tonight, at Cabarrus Arena from 6 to 8 p.m. Along with program choice displays from all our schools and academies, there will be over 100 colleges in attendance, as well as career and military recruiters. For those concerned about the impacts of our current realignment study on program choice for next year, please know that the subcommittee has been formed on the internal redistricting committee to address individual concerns as they arise through the process. We encourage you to apply for the programs during the application period. For more, for more information on the program choice, please visit our district website at wwwcabarrask 12 Dot NC dot US. And then for the realignment, I just want to uh, announce the focus group committee members that were chosen for the community focus groups. Uh, the application process closed on Friday, uh, and we chose the focus group community and teacher members today. Um, so I'd like to announce those so everyone knows who's on those committee members. On those committees, we also sent an email out notifying them that they had been chosen. The first focus group, the members are Taylor Allen Beckett, Sarah Fisney Chironis, Nancy Hunter, Ajitha Manum, Caitlin Fuel, Davida Morgan, Venkata Ramana Nukala, Brian Mitchell, Kelly Baker, Habib Bangura, Mia Doherty, Deanna Roach, Rames, Subran Manium, Anita Parks, Peter Letson Williams, Anthea, Vijay J. Kumar. Also on that particular focus group, representing some of our community is Paige Casterdale, Chad Tarleton, Diane Honeycutt, Angie Brown, and Dr. Leonard Jarvis. The administrators serving on that committee are Dustin Shu, Principal of Central Cabarrus High School, Danielle Baker, Principal of Cox Mill Elementary School, Stephen Bookhart, Harris Road Middle School Principal, Megan Smith, Coltrane Webb Elementary School Principal, Rebecca Phillips, Harold Winkler, Middle School Principal, Dexter Days, Assistant Principal, West Cabarrus High School, and also Susan Morris from the Cabarrus County Government will be on that committee. The second focus group includes Leslie D. Smith, Giovanna Wilson, Michelle Mendoza, Narandar Bola, Monica Dilworth, Dr. Ann Kerr Patel, Amanda Adams, Travis Heiner, Theron Owens, Catherine Mikulosevich, Karen Bumgarner, Erica Lynn Dalton, Kapil Vias, Lynette Antwill, Allison Vincent, and Laura King. The community members on that particular committee are Barbie Jones, Rodney Harris, Asha Rodriguez, Trey Tang, Catherine Amato, Alicia Broadway. The administrators are Sean Poole, Principal Hickory Ridge High School, Karina Patel, Hickory Ridge Elementary School, Sandy Ward, County Office, Rick Money, Mount Pleasant Middle School Principal, and Christopher Myers, the Northwest High School Principal. Our first meeting will be Wednesday, October 11th uh, at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. So those committees have been formed. I thank everybody for, for applying to serve. We had over 300 applications and uh, we chose those those that we just selected that we announced this evening there on the committees. And then lastly, I just wanted to point out two things I was able to uh, attend this week, and it kind of caught my eye and had me thinking about a few things. Uh, the first was, and it's neat to go to the events, probably the best part of the job is getting out to see the kids and the various events that are taking place. Uh, but I was able to attend the first inaugural, the inaugural flag football, girls flag football event at Mount Pleasant High School this weekend. It took place on Saturday. I was able to see J.M. Robinson, Mount Pleasant High School, Northwest, West Cabarrus, Concord High School, Central Cabarrus, at all. Uh, and the thing that struck me about the whole thing was 
the amount of young girls that were out there that were participating in this event. There were probably, I would say, well over 125 young ladies that were participating in this event. It was well attended, had great community support, and just the opportunity that these kids were out there from 9 o'clock in the morning until early afternoon participating um, was just so encouraging. and It was such a great event to watch and see and to know that it was another, it was another way for us to get kids engaged in extracurricular activities to form lifelong friendships, to, to get them on and be able to socialize on early on a Saturday morning and, and do out in the fresh air and kind of just enjoying the activity. Um, and there were a couple games that were really close. One went right down to the wire. It was pretty neat to watch. Um, and I want to commend the athletic directors of our district and Brian Tyson's leadership for taking initiative and getting this event up and running. It was a really great event. It will go on now for another month or so. Um, and it, it concludes with the girls getting to go to the, the Panther Stadium down in Charlotte to participate on the, the actual field that the Panthers play on. Um, I know the Panthers aren't doing that well right now, but it's just still a great opportunity. We want to support them, and uh, you know we, we are very excited and we're appreciative of the Carolina Panthers' support in allowing us to, to go down to the stadium and, and having them support this event. So we thank them very much for that. The second thing, one is, and I've been at a couple of these now, and, and they're, they're, they're if anyone has an opportunity to go, I would encourage you to please go. They're always very well attended, and it it drives home the talent that exists in the Cabarrus County Schools. And that was the Cox Mill Charger Club Band event. It was at Cox Mill High School uh, Saturday evening. Um, it was great to see the Mount Pleasant Band perform. Uh, I believe that uh, Cox Mill and Hickory Ridge performed later in the evening as well. There were other bands there from around the area. But the event is it's it's very well attended. The talent is just incredible to watch. And again, it's another thing that we you know we can't take for granted that it's an opportunity for our kids to participate in something that's going to be a lifelong skill that allows them again to get out to socialize, to build upon upon their talents and to um, just watch their talent. And as I said, everyone, they're you know they're a sport all to themselves. And uh, we not, we have to make sure that we continue to support them and and encourage our kids to get involved in them. I believe Drew Carter and other uh, band uh, teachers took the initiative and led this. It was just really, really a wonderful event to see and to watch our kids participate and to see the talent that exists. Um, so very appreciative of that and thank for the invite and uh, just great to see and I appreciate everybody's support of those events and I would encourage everyone to, when you can, please get out and see these kids perform at the various events. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of opportunities. If you just check our calendar events for you to get out there and support our kids. Um, so I appreciate all of that, and I thank everyone for all their support. That's all I have. Thank you, Dr. Kapicki. We'll move to 6.03, our board attorney comments. Mr. Gil Middlebrooks, do you have any information to share with us tonight? Not this evening, Madam Chairman. Thank you. We're going to move to our guest speakers. Right before I do that, I would also like to just ask if Pam Escobar is able to hear us and if uh, she'd like to just identify herself so we know she, that we can, she can be heard. Okay. Okay, so we will move to our guest speakers. It's now time for public comment. Each speaker will be allowed up to three minutes to speak. An individual speaking for a group may be allowed up to five minutes at the discretion of the board chair to express interest and concerns related to the official business of the board and the school district. The speakers will be called in the order in which we receive the request. A person may not be substituted for a speaker, nor may one speaker dominate or donate time to another speaker. If a speaker runs out of time, then the speaker may leave the additional information with the board clerk. Statements reasonably perceived to be disruptive or intimately, intimately threatening to the orderly operation of the meeting shall not be permitted. Any limitation on public comment shall be viewpoint neutral. The board chair has the authority to rule the speaker out of order. If a speaker or attendee willfully interrupts, disturbs, or disrupts this meeting and refuses to leave after being asked by the board chair, then the speaker may be escorted out and could be arrested for trespassing or disrupting an official meeting. Board members will not respond to individuals who address the board except to request clarification of points made by the, the presenter. So the first speaker is Sabrina Berry. Is Miss Barry here? Okay. 
The next speaker is Christopher Griffin. Good evening, Mr. Griffin. I think this um, this microphone is on for you. Mic check. There we go. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Chris Griffin. I'm a parent of Evelyn Serrano, who she attends uh, C.C. Griffin Middle School. On 10-3 of this uh, year, 2023, a male student violated policy 4333 section ro by bringing a knife onto campus per several parent and student accounts the student only received in uh, in school suspension on 10-4 while said student was serving iss student communicated a threat to quote shoot up the school especially females a secondary violation of policy 4333 you be a serious threat when the school administration was contacted in regards to this manner on Friday, would not confirm if the threat student was or was not on campus. As a parent, I entrust the school personnel with my child's safety while in their presence. With a clear conscience, I cannot place my child into a potentially callous and volatile situation with an individual whom is mentally unstable. The threat needs to be removed from campus or my daughter will no longer attend that campus. Suspension does not prevent this said student, whom in response to having a weapon on campus made a grand threat and does not respect authority and when the student returns may escalate. Also, this student by account of other students and parents was released to the parent and not handled by law enforcement. I am looking for more transparency in the matter of my child and other children's safety. I understand not identifying the said student for their and their family's safety, but when you perpetuate such a grandiose threat, an administration will not confirm or deny if said threat is on campus. That is just beyond. The code of conduct as parents and students, we have to sign at the beginning of the year, where the current principal of C.C. Griffin was a assistant principal, the go and he quoted, the goal of education is the advancement of knowledge and dissemination of the truth. Why can we not have a transparent uh, announcement of is the student on campus or is the student not? Because you're placing a student into a potential threatening environment. You had a student by your own policy, which the school board on page 10, level 3, received a minor infraction. Fresh student. Uh, this is really disturbing and as a parent and speaking for other parents that could not or would not be here we've got to tighten up on these children it's getting to a point that we have over 175 school shootings since 2018 oh, 31 of them have been this year year to date and the year's not even over yet a student brings a weapon to school i don't know the exact circumstance around that but then shows zero remorse and makes a grand threat against people's lives, and yet the student is not handled by law enforcement, and when administration is contacted, states, I can't confirm or cannot confirm if that student's on, I'm not putting my child into a piranha tank. And that's a really, really hard fact. You know, we, we have policies written to be followed and unfortunately it just seems that there's lack of transparency and the open interpretation of the policy set forward by you guys at the school board by administration i know they have discretion but when you have a student blatantly threaten other individuals including staff and students this needs to be taken into not lightly also i mean i have uh started a form on next door in regards to what's going on and lack of transparency which had over 4,000 views in the last 48 hours i've had over 35 comments that this seems to be a reoccurring thing in this district where we have lack of transparency mount pleasant high school was supposedly placed on lockdown on either 10 2 or 9 25 and parents were never notified with the automated calling systems uh, I had another comment that stated they are a friend of staff that 95% of the time serious offenses are not handled to the letter of the policy set forth. As a parent, this is just a utter misjustice. And how can I conscientiously stand 
to have my child in school and not know if it's a safe environment. And I close that with, you know, the policies need to be reviewed. And I need a consent comment that I have a question. Go ahead. Just for clarity, have you spoken to someone at the district about your concerns or is that this that at the was particular why I'm school? Here tonight. Okay, so you spoke to someone at the school and not at the district. Multiple times and law enforcement. I'm sorry. Did you speak to somebody at the district or someone at the school? At the school and law enforcement. That's for clarity. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next speaker is Paul Wanish. Welcome, Mr. Wanish. Good evening. I brought my own timer. We'll try and see how this works. Um, I seem to hit these things at the right time. Um, there was a handout. You should all have one. Uh, the topic is around CCS and uh, district policies. There's a very good uh, website, and it's referenced in the write-up, North Carolina School Board Association. They say, what are policies? It's the primary method through which the school board uh, leads the operation of the school system. Um, it reveals pol uh, local policy board have revived policies, and when they change them, uh, consideration is no less than two meetings. So you have, you should, change a policy by going through two meetings of public hearings. Um, and to me, the policies, the documents are the district's um, constitution, also called the charter. Policies express the vision of the board. You guys are doing a good job on Robert's Rules of Order and how you run stuff, but I've seen that some uh, motions are unnecessary. Um, an example would be naming the athletic field. It doesn't seem it needs a motion. It's something that's run out of the uh, policies of the school board. Some motions are unnecessary, um, and some motions actually are in contradiction to what a policy is. December, you passed a unanimous motion that violated one of the policies you have. My move forward, my, I always have an ask. Um, take the policies that you've got, split them between the members of the board, and everybody take about 10 policies. And you all make sure you know those. And so when somebody says, do we have a policy on this, you can all ask, somebody would answer. Somebody owns policies. Um, I think that'll help the board a lot in general. Um, I also noticed that in the um, current evolution of society, we've got a couple of things that would be useful to have policies on. Um, Uber now supports a 14-year-old calling to have an Uber come and pick them up. Um, they support uh, carpooling. So one student can call and say, Uber, I'd like a carpool to take four me and three of my friends home, or drop off, which would be very helpful. We probably have about 5,000 cars a day it would help the parents to support Uber as well. There's another uh, facility, another service that also does that. We don't really have a policy for program choice transportation. They are pretty consistent. If you're not in the zone, you don't get it, but then there's hub stops. Some routes uh, exceed the area. And walking onto and off of school campus uh, for regular curriculums are also not defined, and I know some some schools don't allow people to walk onto school, the students to walk onto the premise. Um, and electrically assisted buses, see mine is pretty good too. Um, electrically assisted um, bikes are state uh, supported uh, transportation and they can go 20 miles uh, with pedal support and up to 20 miles an hour. So it can be a very useful thing for transportation, not really defined any place. Thank you, Mr. Wanish. Thank you for your time. Okay, board members will move to 8.01 with committee reports. Are there any reports, board members? Ms. Sandage? 
just wanted to talk about a community um, conversation around suicide. Um, as you guys know, I'm a big proponent and a big advocate for mental health. And um, the community is orchestrating, orchestrating a conversation around community uh, suicide and teen suicide, and it will occur on October 29th. And I will post that and make sure that folks have information. I just wanted our community to be aware that we've got to talk about it. Our kids are struggling and mental health is real. And I'll say this again, it is okay not to be okay. Thank you, Ms. Sandage. Mr. Floyd? The athletic committee, I was, <clears throat> had a very good speech about our flag football program, but I'm just gonna, for the record, say what he said. Um, and our, our, we'll have another game this week or another series of games this week at Concord High School at Robert C. Bailey Stadium at Easy Smith Field. The first one starts at 9 o'clock, and the last one begins at 4. So all day long, you can come on by and check them out, and they are great games. Uh, week 3 will be at Central Cabarrus. Week 4, J.M. Robinson, as Dr. Kapicki said, um, December 9th will be playing at Bank of America Stadium to level up the level of football played there at this time. <laughs> and uh, that concludes the Athletic Committee report. <laughs> Thank you. Any other reports, board members? Okay. We will move to 9.01. This is our consent agenda. I need a motion to approve the items listed on the consent agenda. So move. I need a second. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Lindsay, a second by Mr. Floyd. Is there any discussion about any of the items? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented say aye. Aye. Opposed? The consent agenda has been approved. We'll move to 10.01, which is our proposed calendars for the 2024-2025 school year. Board members, is there any discussion about the calendar? Ms. Blackwell. I was Miss Lindsay like five okay, seconds. Okay, sorry. Ago. It's okay. Um, so I'm just, what, hey, I didn't know if you were in here. I have a question for you, Sandy. Yeah. Okay. All right. How can I help you? So I know that we've discussed this in the past with um, Election Day. What would be the difficulty in making that an uncapped day so that if we did have school employees, and teachers that wanted to run for office or participate in election day, they would be able to take the day off. Now, when you mean. Yeah. So we talked about this in the committee and kind of went over a couple of different times and uh, the consent, I don't want to say consensus, but the decision was to keep it as it is. And what I would say to you is we would clearly support anybody that had that particular predicament. I'm going to say that that'd be very unique. Um, and one of the things that we actually like about it is that it's also a way for us to promote people to vote because during the course of the day, anybody that wants to go and vote can vote during the course of the day. We encourage them to do that. Um, and we, we've kind of talked, we did talk quite a bit about this and felt that it's not deterring anyone. In fact, it's actually promoting, you know, get out and vote and we're encouraging employees to do that. If someone is actually running for office, I would ask that they, you know, reach out to me. We have, I think there's always some discretion we could work with people. Okay, so let that be heard to oh, yeah. anybody that works in the school system. Sure. If you want to run for office or work the polls, please see Dr. Kapicki. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fine. We appreciate that. But we do feel as though, like I said, we, it's a good way for us to promote people to go out and vote as well. And ultimately, it's up to them. That's their, their decision to make. Ms. Sandage. Was there any discussion or any understanding of there being a board meeting on open house? Board meeting calendars are usually set in the spring. Yeah, so the board calendar for 2024, Dr. Ward, is not set yet, correct? It's only, it runs until June 30th, right, Christy? So the board calendar runs to June 30th, 2024. We make the calendar for the next calendar year. We'll, we'll take that into consideration. We run. We do not run into that problem like we did this year. So thank you, Ms. Sandage. Any other questions? Mr. Walter? So again, this is a calendar that has an early start. Right, just like last year, but it, we get our full summer this year, so no two weeks short. It's a full summer, and they still get off the first semester ends before Christmas. Is that right? And then 
Yeah, it's an, even, it's an even split, I believe, if I recall correct, you're 87 days in the first semester, 88 days in the second semester. It's 1,051 hours, um, and the semesters have an even split in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah come on, Sandy. Yeah. Word, please. So the, the answer is yes, it's an even split between the semesters. And Dr. Ward, anything Dr. Ward, you want to offer? Anything to add to that? How are you? Great, All thank right, you. So if you want to see the draft of the new calendar, I know last month, well, good evening, board members, everyone, Dr. Kapicki, Carrie. Um, we went back to the drawing board. Dr. Kapicki was very adamant about adding um, support for teachers and making sure that they had enough time for um, pre planning. Um, in addition, we heard from Mr. Treadaway um, listening to the teacher voices and the staff voices in the district, making sure that they had time that they could use for an uncapped day. So these are days that they have earned throughout their years. Um, we want to be able to give them an opportunity to, to use those days. So there are some opportunity there for, for them to do that. So the calendar looks a little different than it did last week. Um, and we're really, we're really satisfied with this calendar, and we're hoping that um, you can see the benefits of the calendar here. We did run this calendar back through our calendar committee. Um, for most of the calendar committee, we did call a meeting, um, and we had probably about 85 to 88 percent of our calendar committee kind of put eyes on it. We had people out last week and those types of things, and those who couldn't make the meeting, and we get that. Um, but for the most part, for those who didn't come, I know I did some one-on-ones with about four or five people. I wanted to really explain it to them, right? Why are we going back to the drawing board? What was wrong with the other calendar? Um, and why we feel like this calendar is the way to move forward. And so I think it gives enough pre-planning. It gives veteran staff time to take off if they need to. You know, after you come back to school and you have that whole week, you, you, you do need a breather. So we wanted to make sure that we had some options there for them as well. Uh, we want to be able to keep our RISE professional development, which kicks off our year, um, and it starts our year off in the right way. And so we do feel really, really, really strongly that that's important for our district. So um, I'm hopeful that this calendar um, meets with your approval. Um, as you can see down below, there was some discussion about um, election day and I did some research back and I found that in uh, 2020 which was a presidential election year 2016 um, both of those days were capped both of those Novembers were capped <laughs> on election day and so as a former principal you know I just came out of the came, came out of the school I very much um, suggested recommended implored my staff members to go vote before they came to school um, they would go check the lines if they were long, then they would go back at lunch, or we let them leave a little bit earlier in the day. So there's no way, there, there's no principal here that's going to say we're not going to allow you to participate in this civic activity. And so I know that my peers feel the same way. And so I think there is time for them to go out and do those types of things. Um, as Dr. Kapicki said, we were almost even, um, 87 days in the first semester, so we had to cut out some other days, some optional days, but we, he wanted to make it very even, um, and so I really do think the calendar, I think it looks pretty good, and most of the calendar committee concurs. Mr. Walter. Uh, thank you for that. Have we put this calendar out to our uh, website where we get feedback from the parents and stuff? Is, that, is it out there available for the public to have commented on it? Because obviously we don't have anybody speaking today. I'm not sure if they're aware of what the calendar looks like or what it yeah. the proposed I, is. Yeah, and I would have thought from last week's calendar, which was definitely not as thorough, that there would have definitely been some people here if they were really concerned so about they the they not know But the answer is no, they have not seen this well, calendar. It's been on board docs, but... Yeah, I think with all respect, we've had versions of this on, on the board. I, I, would, I would ask that the board make a decision this evening. Um, Dr. Ward has put in an inordinate amount of time working on this, and uh, there's only so much feedback you can take. And, and you know, they're, they're, what I mean by that is, I mean, we have to make a decision and move forward. We can't delay the process any longer, and we're, there really is. We're, the, 
and but we have a, we have an engaged website now. We're we're trying to get get yeah, feedback well, on all kinds I, of issues. You think this has this, this has, would have been one that should have been up there? Yeah. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. This is something you charge your superintendent to do. And I, this is the this is the decision that we've put in front of the board. We're asking the board to make a decision this evening. I really truly don't need any more feedback on this in terms of you know our best options. There's only so many days in a year. I hear you. I respect what you're saying, but. It's 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 we need we need a decision one way or the other. I still think it was important that we would have had feedback from our parents. Well, you have a committee that you have in place for this. You have a, you have administrators that are being paid to do this. The board has. We discussed this last week. We put this back in front of the committee again. So I think we've put enough time yeah, on yeah, this and, and gotten appropriate feedback. So appreciate the work of the committee. Well, I do think that that still should go to the public before it well, goes. I, again, we, you and I will agree to disagree on that. Um, I'm I, asking I, for I the board you. for, for a decision. You. I just don't think that's the right method. We, we should have followed the, um, should have used our tools that we had to, to get that out. Well, I, I, again, I'm going to say again, I think we've had appropriate uh, feedback on this. I respect your input. Um, we will probably agree to disagree on this one. Okay, board members. Ms. Sandage. So I know I asked our teacher liaison to comment, and there was a few days in the beginning of the calendar, if I'm not mistaken, that were going to be either capped or not capped. Did we? Okay, so we fixed that. Yes. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure we heard you. And we wanted to make sure that we stay within the parameters of the board, right? So this kind of looks like last year's calendar. Um, we The board did pass the resolution, and so we wanted to make sure that we ended um, before our winter holiday, and we also ended the second semester but before Memorial Break. So and in order to do that, like Dr. Kapicki said, is but only with so many ways you can finagle this yeah. calendar. So we and tried to do the best we could. In all, in all honesty, too, I appreciate the feedback that we did receive because it was that feedback that made yeah. us go back and rethink this and redevelop it. And yep. you know, I appreciate Mr. Treadway's input, our principal's input, and Ms. Fugel's input That's last right. week. I thought they were all good suggestions. We went back and sincerely took that feedback to heart. And this is the presentation that's in front of the board tonight. I would ask that the board act on it. Ms. Lindsay? I'm sorry. I just have one more sure. question. And I'm so sorry I could not make that meeting uh, okay. last week. Okay. Um, this has not ever happened to me before. So I, I'm thinking back to graduations okay. last year mm -hmm. um, and family members that are teachers that were unable to make it to the graduations because the, they were capped days. Um, is that an issue that we've had, like any other family members slash teachers that have not been able to go to graduation events? Teachers during the school day, I mean, if the day is capped that they couldn't get to graduation, is that what you're saying, like people that work in the district? Right, right. they were, any they employee that work. Any employee that works in the district wants to attend graduation, again, we, we'll make those accommodations. Okay. That, that's, that's something we'll work with them on. Okay. We would always want our teachers... I would I would love to see every one of our teachers be at the graduation ceremony. That'd be wonderful. Well, it was many the, their many them, school yeah. specifically, so yeah. that's why you yeah. know it was. No, many of them do attend, and we would welcome that. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. But that is good for us to put down. Thank you. To make sure that that. Any other comments? Just one last one. Has has legislator changed any rules? This is still against. I'm sorry, Mr. Walter. This this calendar still is against what's currently approved by the state is that correct we're, is we're doing this because it's in the best interest of our students and our staff it, it is correct an early start calendar before monday august 26 2024 is against the current state statute okay board members hearing no other questions i need a motion to approve the proposed calendars for the 2024-25 school years i'll make the motion to approve the calendar as presented Need a second? Second. I have a motion by Ms. Lindsay, a second by Mr. Treadaway. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that think Pam needs to identify herself. Why, yes, you need, yes. I was just, thank you, Mr. Walter. That that voice needs to be identified. Okay, Miss Miss Escobar, are you able to hear us and you can speak to us now? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, this action item has been approved. Okay, board members will go to 10.02, the HVAC proposals approval. Mr. Chuck Taylor. Good evening, Mr. Taylor. Welcome back. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Uh, 
I'm here to entertain any questions on these HVAC projects and the design work. <clears throat> this too needs to move forward. We have about a year before they give us the funding to actually start work. I would love to have the contracts bid ready to go because we are looking at multiple years to get this installed. So, Mr. Any Walter. Questions? Yeah, I, I understand the need to have somebody design uh, a system. These are existing school buildings. They're old systems. Is that right? And we're yes, sir. trying to put modern systems in our in our buildings. Um, but I just look at the price and I, my mouth kind of drops because I just don't think that's justified justify the time hours um, here. I mean, it's costing, for me, when I look at it, and I see $1.4 million to get a document um, from a company that they're experts in doing this stuff. They do it all kinds of different buildings, all kinds of different things. It's not inventing the, not inventing the wheel for them, and yet they're going to charge, charge us 5000 300 man hours at a minimum to do that. I just I just can't see that as justifiable for me. Um, uh, there's plenty of other things we could do with our money. Can even hire somebody on staff for this kind of money. But I understand what the need that that needs to get done. And I understand our timeline, but I just can't. I, I got to balk on the cost. So I can certainly understand why. Uh, you would look at that price tag, any normal person would. However, the way the email transpired that I looked at that you sent me with the spreadsheet, I understand what you're doing and where you're going there. I just have to say the way you're extrapolating the cost is incorrect. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into the design work. There's a lot of legwork, there's a lot of traveling, there's a lot of materials involved. Uh, you can't just take the hourly rates that they're quoting. They're quoting that so that we understand when they have to do work, this is what they're charging based on who it is, whether it's the main principal engineer or if it's an intern. So you, you had also asked in your email, Mr. Walters, about a comparison. I did a little homework. Northwest Cabarrus High is going to come in at around 850000 for that design work. The exact same thing minus the commissioning. I'm not sure if they have the commissioning in there or not. So don't don't hold me to that. We're looking at 602000 for the design work, uh, 88. So we're coming in total with the commissioning, which you should separate. The commissioning is a totally separate function. That is a quality control piece that facilities and maintenance, or I am asking for. Uh, I think I explained a little bit last week to you the state of the world with manufacturing, construction, the consistency of workers. This has been an issue. And anyone that's eating anywhere close to dealing with construction, any of you up there that's called somebody to come fix something at your house lately, you're going to understand what I'm saying. The skill levels are just not there. So we're paying for more, or we're paying more for less at this point in time. So I can certainly understand your hesitation there, sir, but I can tell you, and I'm telling you as Chuck Taylor, your director, that these are good prices. This is less than 8% for the design work. That is the norm and the standard for private sector. And we can't select architects based on cost, okay? I did not select these architects based on cost. I selected these folks because I know they're good. They work well with us. They're not going to gouge us on price. I have no doubt. And if anyone has ever sat in a room with me when I'm negotiating with any vendor, most of the time you leave embarrassed because I'm so hard on them. That's just the way it is. So if there's anybody going to come up here and give you a price and it's not a good price, it's not going to be me. Miss Sandage. So I think you gave us a good explanation, at least good enough for me. I, 
I would hope that in the future somebody could have told someone that the that poly B piping is not good. Yeah. And if I understand that correctly, I spent tens of thousands of dollars in my house just for poly B piping because somebody thought it was good when it really wasn't. So I just want to make a motion to approve the HVAC proposal. I'll second. Okay, board members, we have a motion by Ms. Sandage, a second by Ms. Lindsay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, this action item has been approved. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you very much. Okay, board members, we will now call for a motion to convene in closed session. I need a motion that the board convene in closed session to consult with an attorney pursuant to general statute section 143-318. 11A3 and to include discussion of the KMK case and to consider confidential personnel matters pursuant to general statute section 143-318-11A6. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Floyd, a second by Ms. Lindsay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. We are now in closed session.